Hi, best Christmas to all of you. My name is Janice Hong, founder of Christ Unite. This is the first time I'm actually uh, preaching in front of the camera, showing my face. I believe it's time for you to know who I am. After eight years in this ministry, we will show my face. Today, I'll be preaching on John chapter 3, verse 16. For oh God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Come, let's pray. Dearest Heavenly Father, today is a special day to remember. It's Christmas Day. Enable me, your child, to be able to preach well your word, that others may come to know you and your son Jesus Christ, and the significance of today was the real meaning of Christmas. Oh. Really hope that many people will come to know you. Hold on. True to this message. And uh, may they be blessed by your word today. In your son name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. What comes to your mind when you think of Christmas? Santa Claus? Christmas tree of Christmas presents? This thing, holiday? For me, before I become Christian, when I was young, I was brought out to believe that Christmas is all about uh, Santa Claus, Christmas tree with Christmas presents, food, enjoying ourselves, vacations, all these true television commercials, TV shows, Christmas songs. But are uh, this the real meaning of Christmas? I only come to know the real meaning of Christmas after I believe in Jesus Christ, knowing more about Him and uh, understanding the significance. Today, I'll be telling you more what, about what Christmas is all about. It's true meaning. What has it got to do with us? Why is it important we need to know about Christmas, the real meaning of Christmas? Over this past three years since COVID-19 started, many lives have been lost because of COVID. People live in fear. They will die. They will lose their loved ones. It's normal as a human being fear of death. For Christians, we are reminded by God not to fear as we are promised that we will not perish and have eternal life. This is found in the Bible to this verse, John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Anyone who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who comes down to earth, born as a human baby, grown up to become man, we send back God the Father to tell us who He is, what is done for us, shall not perish, but have eternal life. He's the creator, creating us, human beings, giving us life. He comes to the universe, the air we breathe in, the water that we drink, the land, the plants, the sea, the stars, the sun, the rain, the animals, the pets, everything all his creations. He used to sit, making the day rather to be alive. Jesus died at the cross for our sins, defeating death and resurrected on the third day after his death so we can have life, eternal life and forgiveness of all sins. He became man, making the invisible God to be visible 
God for us. It's the reason why we have Christmas Day. It's to remind us of Jesus Christ's birth and what is done for us. That's why love, joy, peace, and hope. Those who do not know what Jesus Christ has done for us, they live in darkness. They feel crisis when they hit. Jesus is the light of the world. We Christians are representative of Christ. We live in light, bear his light. I told in Matthew 28 verse 19 to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is calling from God to us. To share his word to others. It's not the work of only the pastors, apostles, preachers, it's for all Christians. Probably this may be the first time you're hearing there's actually God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, if you're not Christian. If you believe in Jesus, you will redeem, reconcile with God. You'll become children of God, and we have God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. We become heirs of God. We become sons and daughters of God. We have eternal life. But see from there, we live in heaven with God. This is the reason why we, there is joy with Christmas, for the Savior Jesus Christ was born to save us. As Christians, we believe in one God. They are known as three, three in one. We call them Trinity. Jesus Christ is your God, your friend, who never leaves you, your counselor when you're down. This is found in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 in the Bible. For us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders. I will call wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. And so do not fear. For you have Jesus as your advocate to God the Father for your sins, your problems. His righteousness, his death at the cross, cover us of our sins. You must ask, what is Holy Spirit? This is the first time I'm hearing about Holy Spirit. Okay. When we accept Jesus Christ into our life, the Holy Spirit lives in us, helping us to be holy, obedient to God, and understanding God's words which is the Bible. He set up us, us day by day, purify us to resist temptation. And, uh, yeah, to be holy. Some of you Christians and non-Christians may be asking, why do Christians still suffer from illness and death, even though these Christians are good people? God did not promise life is about suffering. Sometimes people suffer so they can turn towards God and rely on God for his strength, comfort, and deliverance. They grow in faith through their suffering. This can be seen from many people, God who suffer and grow in faith. Some of them can be found in the Bible. Uh, David and Apostle Paul. David was actually a young shepherd. He's been called by God to become king, but he didn't become king in Italy. It took many years for him to become king. He faced a lot of life threats, but uh, ultimately he became King David, and he's very well known to people and about love, Papago, and God. For Paul, he does suffer many death threats as well, and had a thorn in him, which could be an illness. He yeah. prayed to God for the rinse of his thorn, but God said to him, My grace is sufficient for you. 
So Paul had the torn in him for life in this world. But he still persevered, continue preaching God's words to people around the world. Even though he faced many persecutions from others. And eventually he was killed. When God promised whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This eternal life is actually life after this earth. In this life, we only have one life, only one life in this earth. So you better treasure it and uh, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. For we only have one life. When you accept Jesus Christ as God into your life, when you pass on, when we Christians pass on, we do not die. We are in the presence of God immediately after our death. So we do not perish. We do not go to hell. We do not go to purgatory, waiting for us to be saved after death. So Christians who have died, they are actually not dead, actually. They are given eternal life after death for Jesus Christ as fated death and resurrected on the third day. Now, let me share with you my own experience as Christians for the past eight years. Life as Christian is actually not an easy part of this past eight years. I've lost Christian and non Christian friends who have left me, not wanting to be friends with me and block me in their lives. Even though I'm doing good for the benefit of others, but they do not understand me. They see me as threat, not believing in me. It's it's hard to see this happening in my life. If you're facing the same problem, remember you and I are as a defender. God, He's our defender. You're not alone. God loves you. He never leaves you or forsakes you. Remember. God said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgive you. May those who bless, those, those who leave us, realize who God really is. What his message really means when he came down to earth as human is to tell us about reconciliation with him and others. It's all about uniting people back to God, to him, and have unity with others. In March 2021, last year, I lost my sixth aunt who passed away suddenly. She was Buddhist. My family and aunt was saddened to lose her. The last day I saw her was when she visited my family during Chinese Sura, which happened to be Valentine's Day too. That day I published in Christ United Valentine's Day sermon, Rescue of Food from God. I thought of telling my relatives about the sermon I wrote and published that day, but I didn't. With her death, it makes me realize the importance of preaching the word to others that they can be sick. It also makes me more aware of the importance of unity with God and others. In April 2020, my mom couldn't walk at the beginning of COVID-19 circuit breaker. That's right, the bones were broken. Circuit breaker in Singapore means we can't settle about our house. I really don't know what to do. 
only when she felt pain in her right leg and couldn't walk at all makes me decide to bring her to see the doctor immediately. I had to use my office chair at home to wheel her to take public transport to see uh, our neighborhood body clinic. The doctor, after doing x ray on her, told us we need to go to ENE accident and emergency unit and hospital immediately. I didn't realize the seriousness of my mom's condition. At the end, she was put on cars and scheduled to see a specialist. A specialist because of it. The specialist is actually a senior consultant who examined her and told me more than 90% of her right leg calf area were broken. He put her on air cast boots and observed her. He said, let her leg heal naturally. If really no choice, then surgery might be necessary. Miraculously, God grew new bones in her right leg, calf area. So, new bones. And she was able to walk a few months later without any surgery. In fact, after uh, she sees the doctor, the doctor was telling me to get her wheelchair. So she is actually not able to move around at the house. Uh, she has to be on wheelchair and uh, need special care for her right leg on her air cast. But it's not to be hurt at all. So uh, I have to take care of her. And I uh, really thank God that uh, new bones were grown on uh, my mom's right leg cup area. And uh, she is able to walk. Today, she doesn't really need any more wheelchair, praise God, and able to walk uh, quite well. Without any walking sticks, and she doesn't need set the boots anymore. So, thank you for that, and uh, yeah, praise God for us prayers. Okay, now let's talk about my own health. Last year, from 2021, April, I had prolonged bleeding, lasting for more than a month. Most of the months where my menses come, they stop only a few days and the prolonged bleeding just keep coming back each month. And I, I really don't know what to do. It's not the typical menses cycle, so I really don't know is it. What's going on with me? I thought it's actually menopause. And then I was thinking, uh, that time I took uh, the COVID-19 vaccine, I read in some of my articles that some people actually has a uh, prolonged bleeding after taking the COVID-19 vaccine. So I thought this could be one of the reasons why I prolonged bleeding. I know some of my friends and uh, one of my friends uh, actually advised me to go and see a doctor and I listened and went to see a doctor. The doctor said that it's un very unlikely that uh, it's due to COVID-19 vaccine as my bleeding started a few days before my vaccine. But i still not very sure about that. So the doctor actually uh, get me to do an ultrasound and uh, we discovered that I have fibroids, which is actually some growth uh, benign tumor outside my uterus areas, which is the, not the norm actually. Normally for fibroids, it's actually going inside within the uterus. So I had to see a specialist in the hospital and uh, given some medication to stop my prolonged bleeding. But the medication doesn't really work at all. Um, my various side effects, like 
not able to tame my red neck uh, when I turn, it's very painful. And um, there's one medicine that caused me to even bleed even more and that caused me to have a more allergy, skin allergy. And uh, yeah, also headaches as well. So none of the medicines actually work. Kind of, I have various side effects which I don't really like. So doctors told me I might just try all kinds of medication and none work, and they advised me to try uh, having a surgery, putting a uh, and insertion inside my vagina using a mirana. They disperse some medications inside me. As I really don't have much choice, and the doctor was also saying that uh, they want to take some samples for me to do some investigation. I agree to their suggestion. So I had surgery. And the test result is actually benign, thank God for that. Uh, but the Mirana, it was actually pushed out by itself uh, a few days after my surgery. It caused a lot of pain in me. Uh, and I do quick, quickly go and get an appointment to see the doctor quickly and uh, to get the Mirana out because it's too painful. So, yeah, it was pushed out uh, on the death right here. The doctor would say it's uh, almost always coming out. Right. So, yeah, Mirana doesn't work, medicine doesn't work. And the doctors were telling me that now my only option is actually surgery. They told me I need to go for either an open surgery or uh, a laparoscopy chemo surgery uh, to take out my womb, the whole womb itself with the fibroids on it. They actually advised me to have an open surgery because my fibroids is growing very big, but I was reluctant. And, uh, I prayed to God about it, and I told God, uh, please Lord, stop the bleeding, let my, the bleeding only come once a month, not more than five days each month. And amazingly, God actually answered the prayer most of the months after I started this, this prayer. So I thought um, I wouldn't really need the surgery uh, after all. I actually postponed the surgery uh, quite a few times and then I, uh, after observation for a few months, yeah, the prolonged bleeding didn't come back. I actually cancelled the surgery. I also tried TCM at that time as well and the TCM medicine also works as well. So it, it do, does stop my prolonged bleeding for a short period of time. But recently, my prolonged bleeding come back. And it lasted for more than a month. And uh, my ultrasound result shows that uh, my fibroids has grown bigger. And within six months, it grew by one centimeter, which is not the norm. Because fibroids normally grow one centimeter in, in a year. So I get concerned. And there's also a new fibroid discovered as well. It's, it's just going to pass some I mean, into fibroids. I decided that maybe this time is really the time for me to have a surgery after all, because I've tried all options. Um, I went to see the doctors again, see various doctors. And uh, 
the doctors told me that I still need to have surgery and they highly recommended me to have open surgery as the blood pressure is going to be it's very unlikely for me to have a uh, hero surgery. I also seek uh, TCM physician's uh, advice as well and amazingly she told me that TCM medicine may not be able to fix my problem. I need to go to hospital and get my own mouth as it might affect my uh, organs areas as well. So, okay, then I, I pray to God and uh, this time I have peace compared to my past. Uh, yeah, I don't have peace at the time. But this time, when I pray to God, I have peace to proceed to surgery. So I was deciding uh, which surgery to do. Is it an open surgery or is it a keyhole surgery? I do some research. And I still prefer to have a keyhole surgery because it recovers faster. Combat open surgery would take about six months. And the hole is also smaller, so making the recovery faster. So I had a surgery recently, back last month on 22nd of November. I'm actually right now recuperating at home. Uh, thank God that the surgery is successful and I'm able to preach to you today. The test result is actually been nice. Thank God for it. The surgery procedure is actually uh, a difficult procedure because it's the two papers are going outside my interest and some of the doctors was telling my main doctor that uh, telling her to actually change it from a uh, keyhole surgery to an open surgery. But my main doctor uh, decided to stick to uh, keyhole surgery. Thank God for that. Thank God for answer prayer uh, that uh, my doctor will be good and God is with them. There's problems in my life. I'm reminded to turn to God and pray to Him. Never giving up on Him, even though He took away many things from me and I had to suffer. I realize that God is always there, never leaving me compared to my friends who left me. It's a friend that sticks closer to me than anyone else. Never forsaking me. He listens to my cries, my prayers. He knows my thought and my heart. Even without saying a word, he really knows what I'm thinking. He knows I know that. Yeah. He knows who I really am. He never gives up on me. He forgets us. He's a loving, compassionate God, slow to anger and abundant in love. Uh, who else but such a loving God who really knows you and loves you unconditionally. Really amazing God. The day before my surgery on 21st November, I come across a worship song. Every priest is to our God. I was looking for worship songs to encourage me. This song, Every Priest is to our God, caught my attention. It's the first time I hear it and see the video. It's a flash mob where Bishop Hezekiah Walker led his team to this song, singing, dancing happily. When I saw the video, I started to think, can we do this here in Singapore, in my country? It would be good if uh, we can actually sing Christian songs in the public uh, to fresh mark, generating public awareness. I could go and find out that I will require a permit to do flash mark. So for now, uh, there's no plans for me to do flash mark. 
If your country allows flash mob, you might want to consider doing it. Uh, getting uh, you and others uh, ready, but make sure that you don't get yourself in trouble. I don't want anything to happen to you all. Just obey the law. And uh, yeah, that is uh, this song, certain steps and all this. Let me read to you the song of this song, the lyrics, Every Priest is to our God. Every priest is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every priest, every priest is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every priest, every priest, every priest is to our God. Every priest is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every priest, every priest is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God is my savior. God is my healer. God is my deliverer. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. God is my savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. God, my savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship of one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise. All of our worship, every praise, every praise. Every place, every place, every place, every place is to our God. This song, I can really, really identify with. God is my savior, my healer, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every place is to my God. Thank God for letting me listen to this worship song at the right timing before my surgery. Reassuring me. I'll put out the YouTube music link at the end of my sermon text, which you can watch after this sermon. Although now I can't have any babies after my surgery, I'm not married, I don't have any children, but it's okay. I am reminded that we Christians are all children of God. I have the responsibility of caring for all God's children with His Word. God showed me many of His little children after my surgery. It also reminded me how I was like when I was a little child. When you face a crisis, you start to recall about the past. He remembers how I was formed, how I grew up. Today, this Christmas Day, I must remember Jesus Christ's birth and what he has done while in earth for us. I hope you find this sermon useful. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ into your life, please follow me and say this prayer. Let's close your eyes and follow me to say this prayer. Dear us, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to come to earth as a human being, born as a baby, and growing up to become human, telling us what you have done was sacrificing your son Jesus Christ for our sins that we 
can be reconciled with you and have eternal life that we can be children of God. That I can be children of God. Lord, I really, really want to be a child, oh Lord. Please come into my life from today onwards. Forgive me of my sins. I repent for my past sins. Oh Lord. For your son Jesus Christ that died at the cross for my sins and I am forgiven. Thank you. Lord. Please, oh Lord, come and live with me. Let me have your Holy Spirit that I'm be able to know more about you and understand your word and sanctify me, purify me of my sins day by day and uh, helping me to be holy and pure. Let me from the day onwards live a life that is meaningful and be able to glorify you through my life. Let me be in your light and not in darkness. Oh Lord, let me be able to enjoy the love, the joy, peace. For the rest of my life in earth before I come and see you in person after this life in earth. Thank you, oh Lord. In your son named Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. If you have said this prayer, Congratulations uh, to be a newborn uh, Christian. Feel free to contact me and share the good news. And please to share with your Christian family and uh, your Christian friends as well. Do get yourself a Bible to read. And uh, you can start off with the book of John. And uh, read from it. I really hope that uh, you find this uh, sermon helpful. And uh, to share it with others if you will benefit from it. And uh, yeah, do let me know of uh, any good news. Now let's close with a benediction for all of us. Let's pray. Me. The grace of God, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. In your son's name, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. God bless and enjoy your Christmas day and Happy New Year. If you'd like to uh, listen to more of my sermon and watch my sermon, do subscribe to my new channel, Christ Your Name. And uh, yeah, to share with others as well, do like my channel. I hope you will be blessed and have a good year ahead. Thank you. God bless.